Do you feel like growing up you just could not talk about your emotions? And whenever you tried to, you either felt embarrassed or dismissed. If you did, then you probably have emotionally distant parents. Now why is that so important? Here's the thing, most of us severely underestimate the impact our parents' parenting style has on us, and as a result, we don't actively characterize their parenting style. And what happens if you fail to do that is you struggle to find the origins of a lot of self-sabotaging traits, and you also have a hard time coming up with a set of rules on how to best interact with your parents that's best for your mental health. Also, this can even carry on into adulthood and you'll find that even now as an adult, you struggle to interact with your parents without getting stressed out. Now, if that sounds all too familiar, then this video is for you. But before I jump right in, let me introduce myself for those who are new here. My name is Asha and I work with introverted professionals and I help them overcome social anxiety so that they can stop people pleasing, confidently express themselves and find their natural assertiveness. So, what are emotionally distant parents like? This is actually a pretty big category and a lot of different types of parents fit under here. But ultimately what this means is that they take care of your physical needs but they don't take care of your emotional needs or your mental health. And the way they react to this can be negative but they shame you for talking about your feelings or they get uncomfortable or they just kind of dismiss it with toxic positivity like you know everything's gonna be okay just don't worry about it. Now, at the end of the day, what really happens is you don't feel comfortable sharing feelings of fear or anxiety or worry with your parents and you don't really get the emotional support or praise that you really needed as a kid. So we end up not really knowing how to process a lot of the emotions that we have and we have to do it and figure it out ourselves. Now, as kids, we have no set of knowing what is right and what is wrong and what is healthy and what is not. So we have a high tendency of developing negative habits on being able to manage our emotions. On top of that, we're also highly suggestible. So we might find that we have friends or people at school who seem very confident and we want to be like them. I mean, we might pick up emotional coping skills from them, whether or not it is positive or negative. And at the end of the day, you might find that as an adult, you're hypersensitive to criticism, you have poor stress management, you have an over-reliance on others for approval and praise and affection, and you might struggle with being able to effectively handle obstacles and failure. Now, what do you do now in adulthood and how can you improve your mental health by improving your relationship with your parents? So depending on the situation with your parents, as I said before, a lot of different types of parents fit into this category. But if your situation allows for it, a nice one-on-one -on -one talk to address certain lighter or not as strong emotions and saying, telling your parents that, hey, I would like to talk about this. I feel like we've been avoiding it. That could be a healthy line of course of action that you could take to improve the relationship for example I actually told my mom um, about a year back that I felt like I could not be stressed around her because she constantly tried to force toxic positivity on me by always saying it's gonna be all right she couldn't handle seeing me stressed even if it's for five minutes and it was always her trying to dismiss it or her trying to move past it as quickly as possible so I sat her down and I said I would appreciate if you don't try to fix me every single time within the first five minutes sometimes I do need to just sit down and mourn and I need you to be comfortable with that is that okay with you so talking to your parents about some lighter emotions slowly pushing them to be more comfortable with emotions is one course of action that you could take however most of the time the best thing that you can do that's healthy for everyone involved is to actually readjust and change the expectations you have for your parents to understand your emotions and take care of you emotionally because sometimes they just might, might not be comfortable with it not used to it and maybe not even able to do that because they've never really done that even when they were kids themselves. Now when I tell people to readjust their expectations of their parents understanding them emotionally I usually get the response but Asha wouldn't that be limiting my relationship with my parents if I just told, expected them to not understand me? Well that might seem like the case but in reality what's happening is your expectations are limiting the relationship because like I said previously they might not be able to understand you emotionally and so when you let go and you release those expectations, what happens is you actually allow a new type of relationship to form as a result. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and as per usual, for any one of you who'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me to overcome your social anxiety and find your natural assertiveness, feel free to book a strategy call with me. The link is in the description. I'll talk to you guys soon.